Hand checkering is a fascinating process, requiring just a few simple tools. Let's take a look at each of them and how to use them. In its original and most basic form, checkering is simply a series of lightly cut parallel lines. They are crossed at about a 30 degree angle by another group of similar lines which creates the diamond shape. Checkering patterns are typically placed on the grip and forend of rifles and shotguns and on the grips of a handgun. Checkering's main function is to help securely hold a gun. At the same time, it should be attractive. Hand cutting checkering requires only a few specialized tools. One of the most critical is the checkering cradle. It holds the stock securely while allowing it to be rotated. The first step in checkering is to locate the panels. A china marker or a very fine felt tip pen works well for this. I use a checkering guide to lay out the master lines. The guide is diamond shaped and depending on the end selected will create diamonds that are either three times as long as they are wide or three and a half times as long. Once I'm happy with the way the checkering panels look, a layout guide is used to maintain an even margin. It's a simple spacing tool which can be set to mark a line along the edge of a stock. Next, the outline of the pattern is cut with a 60 degree single line cutter. This tool is generally available with a 60 or a 90 degree profile. The 60 degree cutter has a steeper angle and more easily follows the marked line. Cutting a line slightly deeper than a 90 degree cutter. Cutters come in two different styles of cutting edges, saw type and file type. A saw type cuts on both the push and the pull stroke, while a file type cuts only in one direction. It's a matter of personal preference as to which one to use. For this stock, I'm using a file type cutter set up to cut on the push stroke. Next, I create the master lines with a scribe. This is a sharp pointed tool which scratches a very fine line on the surface of the stock. The scribe is often used with a flexible straight edge to ensure that the lines are perfectly straight along their entire length. After cutting and deepening the master lines with the 60 degree cutter, the checkering pattern is ready to be spaced out. Spacing cutters come in both file type and saw type and range from 16 to 32 lines per inch. A spacer can be as simple as two cutting edges side by side or have up to four. Some spacing tools have edges that don't have teeth. The smooth edge simply follows the lines that have already been cut without deepening them. They are available to cut from right to left or left to right. There are also cutters called skip line spacers. These cutters are used to lay out a pattern like on this Weatherby Mark V. Every few lines are cut with the skip line spacer. Extending the end of the lines is done with the 60 degree cutter. The 60 degree short cutter is used at the very end of the lines next to the edge of the pattern. I use a technique called hook and pull. This short cutter is set up to cut on the pull stroke it's engaged at the end of the line and pulled back into the pattern. This technique 
helps to prevent overruns. Another critical tool is this magnifying visor. It brings everything closer and makes it easier to cut straight lines. With the light set at a slight angle to create a shadow in the lines, the checkering is easier to see than with direct overhead lighting. Extremely short lines can be cut with a 60 degree vayner. It's a small V-shaped chisel which gets into places that a regular cutter can't. Once all of the lines in the pattern are laid out, they need to be deepened. The first pass is made with the 60 degree cutter. Its sharp cutting angle easily follows the layout lines. Again, when I get close to the border, I switch to a 60 degree short cutter and use the hook and pull method to keep from cutting outside the pattern. The lines that are too short for the short cutter are deepened with the 60 degree vayner. The 90 degree single line cutter is used to finish the checkering. Its wider cutting edge points up the individual diamonds. I make two passes in each line, a light first pass followed by a heavier second one. Again, the standard cutter is used for most of the work, while the short cutter is used for corners and tight places. A small brush cleans out the sawdust. After all the diamonds are pointed, the last step is cutting a border. Borders can be as simple as an extra line around the pattern or have a traditional convex shape. They can also be concave, which is referred to as mullered. Each shape requires a different cutter. On this stock, I'm cutting a traditional convex border. It provides an attractive addition to the checkering, as well as cutting away any small nicks at the edge of the pattern. More than one pass is required to deepen the border, and the work is complete when all of the finish and nicks have been removed. One cutting tool that's not used much in modern checkering is the flat top checkering cutter. Instead of forming points on the tops of the diamonds, this tool cuts a narrow square bottom groove and the diamonds have a flat top. Most all of the cutters are interchangeable and several different handle designs are available. The main differences are in the shape. Some are straight, others are offset, and some have a see-through design. Again, it usually comes down to a matter of personal preference. I prefer the see-through handle design as it also allows me to adjust the angle of the cutter. For the beginner, a checkering kit might be a good idea as it contains everything necessary to cut basic checkering. Then, additional cutters and tools can be added as you like.